so yeah, so you have um people continue to spread and circulate um lies and rumors about his imperial majesty and unfortunately a lot of ignorant people who don't really diligently study and search out the facts and um approach the subject matter without some sort of uh bias or forethought against his imperial majesty from from whatever and for whatever reason that they approach his majesty, men them approach his majesty with a sense of bias. But then many of us as Rastafari and we can say as a Rastafari movement for the past forty years or so, I'll say over this last forty year period, if we would trace it chronologically and look at some of the major events more and more of the movement has turned into a certain um, kind of a regimatic inertia that actually helps to contribute to this sort of uh, dissatisfaction, confusion, um, and lies and slanders against the King of Kings because we're not defending that which we should be defending as Rastafari, as well as not growing as we should be growing as Rastafari. And now this brings I and I to a subject matter here. And let's go to this uh, David Icke. Yeah, David Icke. David Icke's official um, page here. Now, this is not David Icke speaking, but this is a forum that he has on the Internet. And we had caught this in doing some um, research. And we came across some of the information here and this this recurring sort of um false theme let's bring this up right here this recurring theme we're going to touch on his majesty's visit to the pope and that whole situation about the imposter pope and the shepherd of hermes as well one of the early christian documents that has of late been removed from the Bible and therefore from from the Christian community to the detriment, the spiritual detriment of the community. And we're going to touch on Gail Ripplinger's her misquotes as well. But here, this particular individual, and we just have a tight frame here, someone named Them. You know, this Them. That's their logo right there, Them, which seem to have a some sort of, some crazy image there of like a hand or something that maybe some simulated blood or whatever, but this so-called senior member, this is what be a senior member, it might be David Icke himself, you know, some senior member is making this comment that he says, or they say, since it's them, they say that Haile Selassie the first, and, and we're reading it from right here, that Haile Selassie I, or Haile Selassie the first of Ethiopia, was put in place by the British government and made a knight of the Garda in 1954. Most true Rastas would take exception to anybody who reveres him and only worship Jah. Uh, that, that statement there we probably have to go, go through for fine tooth comb because most true Rastas will take exception to anybody who reveres reveres him and only worship Jah. The one the only one who gets away with praising both Jah and Salas I Salasi I is Jah Shaka. I don't know what this is these are some music some music uh, people, reggae matic and music folks. Dub music's the same way too. You know, we've kind of uh, we've kind of forgotten what the psalm by the rivers of Babylon psalm really is saying, you know, and that's another thing in the movement where everybody want to be some sort of um, artiste or do some musical thing so everybody can have a good time instead of the real work of Rastafari, which is the preaching and the teaching of the good news of him and the building of, of, of Jai Kingdom, the building of the kingdom of the king of kings and his Christ. The ball is in our court. So anyway, let's deal with this statement right here because you probably heard this a lot. There's others who have said, and we've touched on this in the earlier, previous video, where they say that it was the queen of um, 
Some say it was the Queen of England, right? Let's move this over here and let's get that. That was the Queen of England, some say. Queen Elizabeth, we've seen this rumor out there, that actually put Haile Selassie on the throne. And, you know, we... We know a little bit of British history, but I think the Queen of Hing England came to Queen Elizabeth. She came to the throne roughly in the 1950s or so, and His Majesty since 1930. So they're not so much saying that anymore. So if you actually go out there, you'll see one saying that the Queen of England put Haile Selassie on the throne. Really? Really now? That's interesting because he was actually on the throne at least um, 20 years more than 20 years before uh, Lizzie Witch or Elizabeth gets on the throne, before she got on the throne, right? But now they persist in telling other lies. You know, when you catch them in some lies, then they'll switch up the, you know, they'll switch up the lies. And now here is another lie that has been told before, but um, it's being told again, and we want to engage this right here, where they say that Haile Selassie, the first of Ethiopia, Adamawi Haile Selassie, Nagusa Nagasa Zetopia, was put in place by the British government. Now, many of us as true Rastafari, as faithful and true Rastafari, who seek to study and show ourselves proof, the first thing we must say in Acts is, where's the proof? There's no case that's being made that this is even true. The people are just saying anything. You see, after we already... Um, confronted them and rebutted them about the Elizabeth or Elizabeth putting Haile Selassie on the throne, seeing that he was emperor, king of kings, not just king, but king of kings of the empire of Ethiopia 20 years before um, Queen uh, or Elizabeth even comes to the throne. So they can't say that anymore, but now they maintain and persist that, oh, his majesty has these sort of connections. But what they don't know about is the black nobility. And moreover, by even asserting that the British have some hand in the coronation of Ethiopian kings and Ethiopian emperors, brothers and sisters, this is an insult. This is an insult to our ancient traditions, this is an insult to our culture, this is an insult to our written legacy, which is far older, if the truth must be told, than the pseudo so-called British monarchy, or at least, let's put it like this, the British monarchy in the hands of the overtly white folks. You see, because that's a part of it that a lot of these David Icke crowds and others, you have to remember that before, before, um, William Cooper, before William Cooper revealed to them that there was such a thing called New World Order and Illuminati, most of them didn't know anything about this Illuminati, New World Order, Freemason. They thought the Freemasons really were these people like on, um, what's that show with uh, Ralph Cramden? What's that show called? Uh, Honeymooners, or like it was some Freemason like on the, on the Andy Griffith on the Flintstones, you know, Buffalo Lodge. They, they didn't know anything about this whole thing. I'm talking about a lot of white folks and a lot of other folks who think like white folks, who, who still, as Morpheus says, um, are still so inanely in, in dependent on the system that they refuse to be unplugged. This is why when they look at his imperial majesty, they must find something to dismiss the clear and the evident reality you know, the clear and evident reality that is basically staring them in the face. So the lie that the British put Haile Selassie in place or on the throne or had anything to do with that, let's, let's explain this for the, for the record, and let's bring up this clash of currencies picture here. This is what the real war is really all about when it comes down to the clash of currency or systems, the clash of systems. So you see, the British system and the European system, if the truth must be told, and most of their systems have either been established by black people in the very beginning or it was Europeans who were transforming themselves 
to emulate a higher system that they had witnessed that was established by black folks. So now for them to say that the British put Haile Selassie on the throne, this is an insult to our, 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 our own indigenous tradition. But we must understand that this is part of the, the, um, the weeds, not, not the seeds, but the weeds of white supremacy and the, the seclorum, the worldly this is white Gentile. This is, we're living in a white supremacist system. So when it's talk about the end of the world, it's talking about the end of the white supremacist paradigm. And this is why we're having even these sort of um, spiritual, intellectual um, warfares on many various different levels. And brothers and sisters, we, we must engage on each of these levels and demand that these liars bring forth their proof. Because the British, the only role that the British played in the coronation of his imperial majesty, the only real role that they played was as, as uh, celebrant, in other words, they came to celebrate the coronation of the one who you see before you, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the elect of God, Siyuma Egeziavihir, Negusa Neges, Ze Ethiopia, the king of kings of Ethiopia, as and according to what was prophesied. So the British were there. But the British were there as, as celebrant to celebrate. Uh, thank you. And they came to bow down. But that's what they came as celebrant, to celebrate. You understand? Because when you come to honor somebody, in a sense, you come to bow down. You understand? When you, if I'm coming to for your honor, I'm coming to bow. Even if I don't physically bow, but they physically bowed too. And there's pictures that show that they physically bowed. That's 72 nations. Now, for those who are into the whole symbolic and mythological kind of link to it, Check out that 72 connection. If you understand the 72 languages, the 72 nations, even the whole Tower of Babel thing, so forth and so on, you'll recognize that those who are part of the Babylon system, the world system, had to come to this remote place in Africa, in Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, this new city, to witness the coronation of a Davidic Solomonic king upon the throne of David in the biblical land of Ethiopia that Psalm 6831 says, Princes shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God. And even um, Psalm 87, which says that this man was born there, and, and Ethiopia, with Ethiopia, this man was born there. So his imperial majesty, Kedemawi Haile Selassie, is the fulfillment of that. So the British came. The British had three main roles besides coming to bow down to the king of kings and, and recognize his sovereignty. They came as celebrant. They came to celebrate this coronation. Although, of course, some of them probably may have had hate, whether those who came or those who stayed back home, you know. You can't, you can't help that amongst those who, you know, those who want to be good, be good. Those who want to be otherwise, be otherwise. And this is why people have free will. You know, it was even the Duke of, uh, what was the Duke of Gloucester said, I can't sit on the throne because I've seen God. You know what I'm saying? I've seen the Messiah. I've seen the return Messiah. I, I, I see what it's really about. I'm in this land that is just like the Bible. The people, the people are of the same, the same ethos, the same, the same um, spiritual type. Ethiopia, especially this time of the coronation of his imperial majesty, was a picture book of the Bible, even down to the, the simple customs of the ordinary people. That's, that's keeping it very real. The second, they came to participate. That's part of the celebrant participant. And thirdly, the British came as servant. The British came as, what do you mean by servant? His majesty, as hired servants, actually. As hired servants, because they were hired, you understand, to do a particular a particular service for the king of kings and for the Davidic monarchy of Ethiopia, the jewelers, you understand, the jewelers, to make certain of 
the the articles, you understand, for the coronation, such as they say the crown, some say the orb, according to the Ethiopian and the ancient designs, so forth and so on. So they, they came as servants. So we see the biblical order, you understand, being fulfilled. Now, a lot of these folks over here, let's just touch on this for a moment, right, because they go on to talk about the, the night of the garter, the night of the garter the Garter in 1954. Now, first of all, knighthood in Ethiopia, let's just go back to this. You know, we have, we should have had these pictures here and we could bring up some of these pictures of some of the, um, of some of the, this is a painting of the coronation that the British came to celebrate. You know, saying that the British came to bow down 70, of the 72 nations that the British came to be participants in, to, to witness, to bear witness. Now, what they did later on, as we have seen in history, that's their own choice. But it's not like they could say that they did not know better. You know what I mean? If you recognize and know that this is Christ and his kingly character, and then you violate and go with the Satanists and go with the so-called um, the enemies of God and Christ, as we feel that the British monarchy would do later on, that, that Queen Elizabeth, that this is what she basically did later on in betraying um, Ethiopia and betraying Haile Selassie and, be, and betraying that kind of a, a, a kind of a grace covenant. You know where in the Bible it says that um, space was given to Elizabeth, space was given to Jezebel to repent, but it says that she repenteth not. It's both speaking of the so-called Queen of England, but moreover speaking of Great Britannia, speaking of Great Britannia. Now, the whole idea about the Knight of the Garter, first of all, concerning Ethiopia and concerning His Imperial Majesty and, and St. George, there were knights in Ethiopia long before there were knights in Europe. And if we had some of the pictures of the, um, what you call it, some of the pictures of some of the temples like Lalabella, Lalabella, we could probably show you that. That's why when you look at a lot of this symbology, this symbology is not new to Ethiopia. When you recognize that the, that European Freemasonry basically is a Johnny-come-lately thing that's based on a lot of myths and legends, that they want us to make believe that they were a part of, like they built the temple of, of Solomon and all of this other myth and legend, and that's makeup. The earliest period of time of, of knighthood among the Europeans, and we're going to touch on this one too, the earliest period of time of knighthood among the Europeans was roughly um, 900 somewhere around 900 to 1,000 or so. That's the earliest period that we have on recorded record of knighthood among the Europeans. But if you study Ethiopia, you will recognize that there's a direct connection with Caduce Georgis and with St. George that goes back at least to the time of his martyrdom back in roughly 303, 316 um, A.D., so that's nearly 700 years. Ethiopia had knighthood, Christian knighthood, uh, 700 years before the Europeans even got involved in their so-called crusades. But see, a lot of these folks here, they don't know this. And like his imperial majesty says, you know, um, they lack uh, wisdom because they lack experience, and they just don't know what they just don't know. So the whole connection with the Order of the Garter, the Order of the Garter originally was a black monarchy. The black British established the Order of the Garter and the Order of Knighthood and Chivalry in Europe, as well as the other thing 
what they call it, the bard. You know, the whole idea of the bard, the musical bard. I mean, need we make the connection with black people and music, so forth and so on, and then white people copy it and then kind of idolize it, put it in its own category, and try not to change it. You know, that you know, this is what a lot of the, the European music is really about. A lot of their classic music, even some of the music that we say, like we listen to some Irish music, and we're like, wow, you know, I could kind of feel some of those tunes right there because it's like Ethiopian and African music. You see, if, if you're able to receive it, but if you already are, like Morpheus said, you know, so inanely subservient and plugged into the beast, you're not going to recognize that. Now, um, now they have other lies here as well, but that, that, that one lie we wanted to get into right there. Here this person is talking about how his majesty was tiny and the pictures that, that were posted must be staged because his height is not apparent and this person, Selassie, was not even five feet tall, which is a lie. You understand? Roughly five, five, four. You understand, was his height, was his known height, 5'5", five, five, some would say, but 5'4", even 5'3", but this person, he wasn't even 5 foot feet tall. So just to kind of show right here how the lies just get outrageous, and, and, and we need to, you know, rebuke them and, and need to rebut these right here and engage these with just the truth, just the facts. But he had a kingly bearing. He held himself with great dignity. Now, this person here talked about how they came to uh, Addis Ababa in 1961, just after the first coup attempt against Selassie. Other Americans were told, told me that they hung the rebels. And speaking about he had two sons, and the Duke of Harar was very popular, but died. Really, we'll say he was killed. It was a Freemasonic Illuminati plot to kill the heir of the King of Kings, the one who they felt had the most potential, and that was, um, uh, I think it was Ras, was that Mekonen? I believe it was Mekonen, or his name might have been David as well, but Mekonen, who had died in a, uh, or was killed in a car accident. Of course, it's strange because there were hardly any cars in Ethiopia then, but I think the accident, I believe, took place in Europe, if I'm correct. It might have been on the Autobahn, or in Germany. And then he says that, well, the second son was repulsive, short, fat, with a deeply um, pocked, marked, round face. And as I remember, the second son was involved in the coup attempt, but he had been allowed to live, and somebody else says, um, serves them right, blah, 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 blah. Now, this person now comments on this lie and false accusation about the British government putting Hala Selassie in place and then making him a knight of the guard. And no, they recognized he was already a member of the oldest knighthood and brotherhood in the known Christian world and was speaking about Ethiopia. And see, this is what a lot of them don't know because they're so set on their own European. Everything has to emanate from white people. And even a lot of these David Icke folks and the rest of them are on that same madness. But this person said right here we thought was interesting, very interesting stuff. Anybody that that closely connected with the British royal family and gets knighted by them and put into power is a bad seat if you ask me. Okay, well, anybody who uses Illuminati Babylonian money and live in their system is a bad seat if you ask me as well, right? You, you know what I mean? These are some hypocrites. These are some real hypocrites. You say closely connected to the British, the real original British royal family was black. It's the black British. You see what I'm saying? And some of that blood, very little of it, even Colin Powell's connection with uh, uh, Diana Spencer, so forth and so on, is just another example of that. If you don't know anything about the black British, then just do a little bit of research for yourself. Last Saturday, this person, I spoke to one of my mates while we're out, while we're out drinking. He's a big B.I.G. reggae fan, reggae music fan. For some time now, he dresses in reggae clothing. This is, this, this is hilarious. But see, this is how some of the Rastas, the Rastas out there, not the Rastafari or the Rastafari, but when we try to make that distinction between Rasta and Rastafari. 
You know what I mean? Like the, the, the distinction between a, a, a follower of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and the so-called slippery grease can that call themselves Christian, it's a big difference. But this so person, he has his whole house decorated in reggae colors, posters, etc., and, of course, a few pictures of Selassie. Now, he told me last Saturday that he read a book about Selassie, and he came to the conclusion that he wasn't such a nice guy at all. Whatever. At least he didn't lead his country that way. Mm, what? There was also some stuff about him sentencing, sentencing people to death. I just have to just borrow this for my, my, my Jamaican brothers out there. What kind of pussy clot is this? You know, what, what, what kind of rat hole is this? The person says, I don't, I don't know. I guess I'll, do, I'll just do whatever I was doing, enjoy reggae music, and leave Selassie for what he is, was. Nothing going to change if we really find out he was Illuminati slash whatever, and then a smile, peace, so forth and so on, right? Now, this is what was interesting. Um, hi. Well, I'll make it short. This person right here posted this. I'm wondering what information people can give me to why Hala Selassie I or Hala Selassie I is never mentioned when it comes to the Queen, Saxon, Colbert, and JFK. I, I can answer. I, I think it's a sis, actually, or, or I think someone named Monica or, or Moika. Moika, well, very, very, uh, very directly. If they were to mention this matching connection, and you're going to start people thinking, people are going to start looking for things. Some fools are going to say the lies that they've been saying, but other people are going to go a little bit deeper and then find out the real truth. And then the Illuminati, the Freemasons, the other Satanists, they won't have a place to run and hide. They'll, they'll have to try to hide from the face of the Lord because the truth will just be that illuminating the real light, not, not these people that transform themselves, you understand, to be ministers of righteousness, you know, but the, the, the true light. Just to start with, I mean, to be honest, I guess we all have a million questions to ask David Icke or Alex Jones. Not really, could they just say the same thing over and over? But I never hear about his majesty yet. Alex Jones plays a lot of Bob Marley music on his show. I mean, it's kind of obvious. What was the inspiration for Bob Marley? What was the ins you know what I mean? What's the inspiration for Bob Marley? It, it's his majesty. It's Ethiopia. It's that half of the story that Babylon can't afford to. Another question you can ask, Moika, and others who might be seeing this, with her questions, how come they don't make these connections? Another very important question to also ask is whenever they talk about World War II, how come they always ignore um, um, uh, Mussolini, the wannabe tin pot Caesar, you understand, invasion of Ethiopia? Why they also avoid the fact that regardless if people today want to accept it or not, people in that time recognize that he is and was the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. So while we had Jews not being exterminated but persecuted somewhat in Europe, we have others of Judah, black Judah. Notice this is black Judah. Don't get no attention. Black Judah Holocaust, the Ethiopian Holocaust in Ethiopia, they use they use weapons of mass destruction. They use chemical, biological weapons, so forth and so on. And none of that's absolutely ever mentioned. You see? I mean, those things should be very obvious. See, we're not, even a lot of these people who are so called exposing some of the truth, you understand? They've already done it already. They've already told you what they know. They really don't know anything else to really tell you. All they're there to keep you to be like an alternative channel to turn to. You understand? They don't want you to make your own make your own movies, make your own documentaries, make your own TV, make your own mind up for yourself, to find the truth for yourself. Also, let's just go on with Moika's statement. Also, to go further before Alex Jones and David Icke, and I love this 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 acknowledgement of truth, Rastafari already were on to the Illuminati, the New World Order, i.e. Babylon. Exactly, but some got um 
Some did like Achan did in the time of Joshua. They saw the beautiful Babylonian garment, and when they were told not to covet or take anything, they hid it under their house. In other words, one saw the bling bling of Babylon, and some brothers and, and, and sisters um, who were immature have gotten enticed, you know, saying, who were not fully grown up, but somewhat, as the Bible says, um, like a novice. They got, they got puffed up. You understand, and they 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 got caught in the 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 devil's the devil's web, and we we've, we've seen this even to level Bob Marley, though he kept sought to keep his faith, he was surrounded by a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing. Anyway, any information relating any of this would be greatly appreciated. John God and protect all of you. Bless Moika. Sorry, Moika, we wasn't there to really um, respond to you. That was like 2010 or so. But this person says, greetings, Moika. I've made one sentence of your post bold to illustrate a point. Reggae definitely raised a lot of awareness back in the 70s. And if I remember correctly, the FBI, CIA had files on Bob Marley. It would be surprising if he wasn't monitored. You see, people still are playing games with you. He was murdered by the CIA Nazis. It's, it's, no, it's a known fact. This is already out there. People still say, well, I don't know. I don't know. If David Icke says it, then people believe it. If Alex Jones says it, then people believe it. Okay. However, I think of late that certain artists have lost the original plot, to put it mildly. I, I kind of agree with this respondent here. If you go to YouTube, you will see many, quote, roots, end quote, artists offering support to Barack Obama, Coca T, and Steel Pulse uh, spring to mind. Also, Michael Rose. Here is a lyric uh, snippet of the recent Steel Pulse song, There Must Be a Way. I've quoted a good chunk so that I'm not accused of taking the words out of um, context. And I'm just scanning over the song right there. And um, I really don't see uh, anything that is wrong with this part's highlighted, too. That's the work of the, the Illuminati. That's made a plan for you to run that course. But never bow down to the Antichrist. We wear 6'6", six, six, behold, a pale horse. Yes, I know. Then the person says, it begs the question, why would they mention Illuminati and quote Bill C Cooper? Did they quote him? And then turn around and support Obama. Bill Cooper, he was a C he was what, a CIA agent? How many people did Bill Cooper kill? Yes. God bless the dead, and he's out of here, and he finally exposed a lot of stuff, so forth and so on. But come on, let's be real. You know what I'm saying? Let us be very real. What, Bill Cooper said his support was the Lord and, and was a relationship with Jesus Christ, right? These people like David Icke and the rest of them, they all throw all that in the trash too, right? Don't they? So these people are a bunch of hypocrites and turn around and support Obama. As a matter of fact, during the election, the ban were even saying donate towards Obama's campaign. And so what with that? I mean, don't you use money, whoever you, you are? Anyway, this is just to give you a, a brief, um, a brief uh, idea. Um, this person said, Alice Selassie, highly unlikely. And there were many on to the Illuminati before Jones, Ike, Cooper, et al. In fact, wasn't the Bible speaking of Babylon, apocalypse, bloodlines, and some mark of the beast, etc.? Okay. That person really didn't offer anything really of, um, um, yeah, any, anyway. You know, this is basically more of the same, but this is your David Ike for you. A lot of your people need to wake up to, um, you know, David Icke, you know. Um, this person says something interesting here. You remember the parables? Does anybody remember the parables of Christ? Do you remember the parables of Christ when we talk about the kingdom of heaven will be like this? And then he pictures that there's like a man who owns like a vineyard. And, for example, the one with the talents, the one that had one talent, he basically buried it in the ground, and that one was bound hand and foot because the master of the vineyard said, you know, you should have done something with it. 
You know what I mean? It seems like when you read the parables of Christ, if you really can understand the parables of Christ, you can really understand why a lot of these folks here aren't getting it. They're saying that there's streets that were filled with beggars. Did Christ heal every person that was crippled? You understand? Crawling around on withered, twisted hands and knees. And there was no law. Uh, there was only the royal family. Ethiopia was run like a medieval fiefdom. No Christ-like compassion. No rights for the common man. What about slavery? What about what about slavery? See, if we judge them by the same things that they that they um, judged, you see, what I'm saying, if we judge them by the same things that they judged, it will become very very clear to us. So we we call this David Ike page. This is why we're not a big uh, not David, I, yeah, David Ike page. We're not a big um, David Ike fan or whatnot because they basically say the same old thing, and they know that there's a higher truth out there. But you know, they're not willing. You know, they're not willing to take a stance on those things. They're just middle of the road kind of guys. You know, that just keeps you in a anxiety state. Seventy-two nations attend the Holocaust's coronation inside the Ethiopian Church. King George the fifth son, the Duke of Gloucester, gave Selassie a 27-inch uh, solid gold scepter, scepter of Judah, from their museum in England, or really from, from yeah, their museum, but the museum stole it from a lot of other places. This very scepter had been taken from the hands of Ethiopia some thousand years ago by Julius Caesar, and then, then the British. When King George the fifth gave Ethiopia back her scepter, England was saying in essence that they were bestowing Ethiopia the right to rule her kingdom. What? The Duke of, uh, of, of England made obeisance to the new emperor saying, Master, Master, my father has sent me to represent him. He is unable to come, sir, but said that he would serve you until the end, Master. Want to know more about HIM? And this is this is a closing argument right here. HIM is the only royalty I respect, mainly because he promoted righteousness and equality of all human beings, denounced slavery and colonialism. I think the fact that he received so many honors from the occult orders proves he was feared by the elite. He his voice gave power to us as a Rastafari and to all righteous people actually to overcome the wicked Babylonian system. That's why he had to be mysteriously shut down as people assume. But the main point of this is that the assumption that the British uh, somehow has had power in Ethiopia. In fact, they probably have more power in Ethiopia today than they ever had in the time of His Majesty or any time before then. And just like with the the Christ or Yeshua, Jesus, Jesus, they had to find um, uh, Askarotawi or uh, Iscari or so-called Judas to betray the king of kings and to betray actually the Ethiopian own sovereign system. Ethiopia has lost that um, sovereignty um, momentarily, but as far as the British placing his imperial majesty on the throne or having anything to do with his majesty's right to rule, that is without any evidence, that's an that's a insult. And either ignorance, either one is saying that ignorantly, or if they know full well Ethiopia's 3,000-plus-year-old history, then they are saying that maliciously. And therefore, they really have no sort of credibility and should not have any credibility with any sane or logical thinking person. His Imperial Majesty is and was a sovereign ruler coming from a root and a tradition that the Europeans and white folks have a really hard time accepting and brainwash um, um, Negroes and, and other Gentile peoples who, who, who just learned about the Illuminati the other day. 
they just learn about the new world. Or we can go back to 19, what was it, 40, 42, 41, where Matthew makes a speech and he points out not only is this so-called a, a, a conspiracy brewing in the world, but he calls it exactly what it is, that is the dragon using that biblical symbolic language. And if you look at all of the American and even English connections and, 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 and Rome, and if you look at America, England, and Rome, they all at the highest level of their system utilizes a, a, a dragon or use a, utilizes a type of dragon-like um, motif. And truly, that shows who they are, both by the symbology that they use as well as by the deeds that they do. Now, as far as internal politics uh, of Ethiopia, that is another matter. And I say another matter because, first of all, if ones don't understand Ethiopia's own indigenous traditional system to, to um, even have the audacity of the gall, to assume that the British uh, the m monkery, and nowadays the monkery or the mockery, the British mockery, did not put His Majesty on the throne of the Ethiopian monarchy. You understand the Solomon and Sheba. You know how every time you hear them talk about Solomon and Sheba, they say it with great pains. Like, they just can't believe that because white people have lied to white people so long, you understand, that they must think, you understand, that it must be something different other than the plain, you know, the plain truth of the matter. So anyway, brothers and sisters, we're going we're gonna to continue a little bit more on this subject matter. This was getting off of the subject matter that we originally wanted to record here, but we couldn't um, allow this point not to be addressed since there's still ones that have the audacity to make such an accusation against our sovereign and not to even provide any credible proof or even to make a prima facie, prima facie case. You know, all they say is, such and such and such. Where's your proof? Where's your proof? Doesn't even the Bible say two with two or three witnesses? Let every word be justified. So bring your witnesses and let us cross-examine it. And if your, your witnesses and your evidence proves to be correct, listen, we will acknowledge. But will you acknowledge if you can't find any evidence? for your lies and your slant, any credible evidence for your lies and slanders against this righteous man, against Kedemawi, Haile Selassie, our Godfather and King of Kings? What is your answer? <laughs> 